tonight, the world-renowned psychic detective who's come out of retirement to try and solve the latest Outback murder mystery. When Jimmy O'Connell's body was discovered last December, police originally put it down to misadventure. But his shocked family was convinced the details just didn't add up. And eventually the death was ruled as suspicious, but that's about as far as it's got. Now, as Frank Pangala reports, the psychic who's worked with UK police on cases like the Yorkshire Ripper is so convinced the police have got it wrong that he's arrived in Australia to investigate for himself. When you come to a site like this, it retains vibrations. It's, imagine the strongest emotion that you can feel. Somebody terrified for their life. They're going to get killed. Terrified. This place should be alive with vibrations of this poor person kicking and screaming. No. It was flat. And then I knew that Jimmy was dead when he came down, when he was brought down. He was dead. He was not killed here. Of that, I am confident. Robert Cracknell is television's famous psychic detective. Now he's come out of retirement to shed some light on Australia's latest baffling bush murder mystery. There was no guarantees. There still are no guarantees. I'm just putting myself on record. Um, and I believe I have established a motive. Jimmy was a young man who'd grown up in the Territory and um, was very much... Uh, in love with where he lived. He was a fisherman, mad keen fisherman, and um, like any young boy his age, loved his car. Um, he was the youngest of three children and um, quite a vibrant personality. Jimmy O'Connell's body was found close to the burnt out wreck of the car he loved on a property near Darwin last December, almost a month after his distressed family had reported him missing to local police. He was very close to his family. He was not the sort of person that would pack up and, and leave without telling anyone where he was going. But what's also quite disturbing about this case is the bungling that went on in the beginning. Now, Jim was a 24-year-old man, and to some degree, I think the police feel that when people of that age do go missing, they generally treat it very differently to a young child, for instance, that goes missing. And the resistance the O'Connell family met and they began to question many aspects of the police investigation. The police advised us that the results of that autopsy was that Jim had died of exposure, and that was a finding that we found very difficult to believe. Um, the location that Jim was found didn't suggest it to be an, ex an extremely isolated area, like you would expect someone to die of exposure, say, for instance, the Simpson Desert. Jimmy's sister, Sonia Peters, says things didn't make sense Adding to the intrigue, her brother was suing seven policemen for an alleged assault. We had cause to believe, very serious cause to believe, that he was fearful for his life in the days before he went missing. And given that knowledge, we know that he would not have driven into an isolated area like this. When a second autopsy revealed the death was suspicious, the whole tone of the investigation changed to where it's now a possible homicide. We have had to consistently um, work the police on this case. We've faced resistance from the very beginning. Um, it's been extremely painful, extremely traumatic, um, devastating to not know if you can trust the actual police investigating your son's death. The case kind of grabbed a hold of me. Fearing the case was going cold, the O'Connells turned to 74-year-old Robert Cracknell, a psychic with a difference. He's a trained private investigator who has worked with UK police on notorious cases like the Yorkshire Ripper. No psychic on his own has been responsible for solving a case, murder or mystery. But they have certainly been most important in being able to help the police with information which they did not have. He felt so strongly about the case and so strongly that the police were not being objective in their investigation, that they were hiding something, that he had to come out here and look at the scene for himself and be on the ground. And we're very thankful that he's done that. The initial supposition was that uh, he had come out here, laid himself down in the gully, 
and died, and the theory of suicide was offered. It, there was no question that it could have been suicide. After visiting the scene and viewing various exhibits, including what's left of Jimmy's car, Cracknell has told police what he believes may have happened and who may be responsible. I, without question of doubt, feel that I have established a clear motive. This um, also, I have tried to give an indication as to the two people that I feel were involved. It's certainly a long shot, but one Sonia Peters says is worth taking. In the meantime, the family will not bury Jimmy until they know what happened to him on that lonely Northern Territory track. He's turned it around. We're very concerned that the case would become cold, but we think now there's new evidence that's come to light that will help us find out who did kill Jim. If my being here has proven to be the catalyst to bring it again to the forefront of the public's attention and also to the police's attention, then that's worthwhile coming all the way over.